Welcome to a new planetary and seismic update. The anticipated larger seismic activity did not occur on 30 or around 30 April. If you look at the SGI graph, as I mentioned in the previous update, we had stronger seismic activity on the 28th, a clustering, the typical clustering of stronger seismic activity, and we had a magnitude 5.9 borderline 6 at the Ryukyu Islands yesterday. And that was all the largest seismic activity, magnitude 5.6 and larger uh, in this time frame. So as you can see, you can have a convergence of critical planetary geometry. And it's always the question how Earth is going to respond. Uh, this time we didn't have a higher 6. Well, we had a 6.6 .6 on the 28th. But other than that, we didn't have a larger seismic activity. So what are we going to have in the next couple of days? If we look at the SSGI graph for the coming week, we see some critical planetary geometry. These are the red and purple peaks, but I don't think it will be too critical. Yesterday night we had a small convergence of planetary and lunar geometry, and we will have similar convergence on uh, 4th. If we look at the solar system, we see that yesterday night, um, and it was late night, we had Moon, Earth and Neptune in a conjunction, and that was uh, followed by Sun, Mercury, Earth. And that is a planetary conjunction on itself, not too critical, but the combination of the two may result in some seismic increase. It may not uh, reach magnitude 6, maybe it will be borderline 6. That is the question. And then on the fourth, like I said, we have a similar convergence that will be Moon, Earth and Jupiter followed a few hours later by Mercury, Sun, Uranus. So these conjunctions, the planetary and lunar conjunctions, uh, yesterday night and on the 4th, they uh, occur pretty much at the same time. And as a result, we can have some seismic increase. Could be higher 5 magnitude. Uh, it could reach uh, borderline 6, maybe low 6. Uh, it really depends on the condition of Earth's crust, the amount of stress between faults, exactly how large the seismic activity is going to be. But again, I do not expect really large seismic activity with this planetary and lunar geometry. Uh, if you look at the atmospheric fluctuations that we had in the last couple of days, on the 29th, South California and also uh, east of New Zealand. In Southern California, we did have some earthquake swarms um, uh, following moderate seismic activity in the four magnitude range, uh, south of the Salton Sea uh, particularly. And then uh, yesterday, two fluctuations. The first one seems to mark the region in the Mediterranean, but I don't think it is a really convincing fluctuation. And also to the south, near the South Sandwich Islands. And then later on, and that was a really significant fluctuation that marked the region uh, east of Assam in Asia, and also the south Myanmar, Bangladesh, uh, down to northern Sumatra. And that region may experience larger seismic activity uh, this year, perhaps. Uh, if you look at history, uh, Assam had a great earthquake in 1950 and before that also in 1897. So there were about 50 years in between. We are now over 70 years since the last great earthquake in that region. It could be due. And also to the south, the Arakan subduction zone near Bangladesh. The last time a great earthquake occurred was in 1762 that we know of and that was an estimated magnitude 8.8 .8. and further down the Andaman Islands that is actually where the great earthquake in 2004 stopped uh, from the Andaman subduction zone to the North Arakan subduction zone. These are critical regions where we could see a significant seismic increase in the near future. But for the coming week, I don't expect really large seismic activity. Uh, like I said, uh, higher 5 magnitude, borderline 6 most likely, with the planetary peaks that we see on the SSGI graph. This is the update for now. Until next time.